Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Glow Your Own. This is session three in FX for 2024. It's great to see so many people returning, doing some coding. Last week, we made some physical circuits. This week, we're going to do some more coding, and we're going to pass on straight away to Sophie. We've got Sarah again helping with the troubleshooting. And if you're not able to come to this session today and you're watching this on demand, please do come to another session and hopefully you can stay behind in the troubleshooting bit, which is not recorded at the end of this live recording. Okay, Sophie, over to you for some coding. Fantastic, thank you, Dane. And hello, everybody. It is so wonderful to see you again for um, our third session of Glow Your Own. Gosh, it's going really quickly. At the end of this session, we will be halfway through, hmm. which is very exciting because I can't wait to see what you all create by the end of, um, by the end of it. So what we are going to do today, last time, as Dane said, we were doing lots of turning lights on and making them flash in beautiful patterns, um, multiple lights, all kinds of fun things with that. But a light that is uh, always on and it just flashes continuously or something, that might get a little bit annoying um, uh, in your light. We want to be able to control our lights, um, don't we? So what we're going to do today is we are going to use uh, buttons to control if our light is on or if it's flashing or whatever we want it to do. OK, so. Yeah, join with nickname, BYO5000, that's me. All right, so we've logged in here. And now we are ready to create our circuit. Now, I think most of you were here um, at last session or the session before. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with the circuit that we created um, last week. So you should be able to find that in this um, in your homepage of the Tinkercad. Um, so you can see here is mine. I called it GYO1 light because it's glow your own and we made a light. So you click on it. And then tinker this. Then you wait for a minute. And you can see that uh, my circuit has um, come up here. So I've got um, one single light at the moment. So I go from my Arduino through the wire, the circuit traces through the LED, through a resistor, back through the breadboard, and then back to the Arduino. So if you all find your circuit from last time and then maybe give me a thumbs up or something um, to show me that you're ready for the next bits of the code. Um, I'm just going to open up the code section actually and show you the code that we wrote together last time. Um, so this was flashing on and off. I can see we've got some people who are already um, already there. That's fantastic. Good job everybody. Um, don't worry. Um, uh, don't worry if um, you don't have the circuit ready. You can just copy the circuit that you can see on the screen. Uh, and if we don't quite quite catch up, then it's okay because we're recording this, and you can always watch the video and um, pause it, stop us, probably pay it pulling a fully face, knowing me, um, and then. Uh, carry on at your own pace. Okay, so you'll see that this light, uh, this circuit and this code makes my light flash. So if I press start simulation, um, my light, my lovely yellow light will start to flash. There we go, fantastic. So everything's working and I would check that your circuit is doing what you think it should be. Um, so it could be flashing or it could just be turned on. Um, but make sure that your light does turn um, does turn on. All right, I'm going to stop the simulation because what we want to do is we want to add a button. Um, uh, and that is one of my favorite things too, because I love putting inputs in. That's what we call them. We call them inputs and then causing uh, changing, making the world change because of the inputs that we give it. Sorry, I double clicked. Um, I double clicked to start, didn't I? So let's hide the code for a second and we'll focus on, this, on the circuit to start with. 
um, and we'll add in our button. Now, you should be able to see your button. Uh, you should be able to see the button on the screen. It looks like a button and it's called push button. Um, so here we go, we're gonna grab that and then I'm gonna pull it over and I'm gonna put it on my breadboard. Now with buttons, the best place to put um, to put your button is over the kind of little, what would we call it, this channel, this canal, this bit here at the bottom between, uh, in the middle rather, between row E and row F, so that it goes all the way across, across like that, okay? And then what we're going to do is we need to connect our button up to the Arduino. And there's a few steps to this one. It's a little bit more of a, um, a, a complex circuit than just the LEDs. So the first thing is we want to connect it to our Arduino. And that's so that we can the Arduino can tell if the button has been pressed or if it hasn't. So I'm going to get a wire and I'm going to uh, go from the uh, little button leg on the right hand side and I'm going to make my wire go over like this. I know it's, it looks like a funny wire, but you'll see why I'm doing the funny shape of my wire in a second. I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to go back down here and then I'm going to go to pin four. And then I'm going to make my wire nice and straight because I like straight wires. Okay, so now you can see that my Arduino is connected to my button. Okay. If you've got any questions, do pop them in the chat um, and Sarah and Dane will be able to help you with that. Okay. Uh, so connected to the, my Arduino is connected to the button, but then there's nowhere for the circuit to go. So we need to put some more connections in um, to make it, uh, to make it work. And actually we're gonna to have to do two connections. So next up, just like the, uh, the LED, we're gonna use a resistor, okay? We're gonna use a resistor to connect it back down to the ground. So let's pull a resistor out here. And on the same leg as that wire, I'm going to pull this resistor down to my minus light. So it comes onto this, um, row of the Arduino that you can see all colored in the green highlighted dots. Okay, so now you can look and see that the Arduino goes, the, the circuit goes up from here through pin four, all through my wire, then I've got the button and a resistor, and then it goes back down to the ground here. Okay, so give me a thumbs up when you've done that. Um, that part of the circuit. We've still got a couple of more wires to do um, to make uh, the button work. Um, oh, looks like you're doing jolly well, everybody. Um, so we're not quite finished with our wire yet. Um, but uh, with, our, um, with our code yet, but we are getting there. Okay. Quite a few of you have got um, raised hands or put lovely emojis in the thing. Oh, we've had a great question um, from Nick. Is the value of the resistor correct? Now, really good remembering because we did talk last time about having the right level, the right strength of resistor for the LED. Um, so good job, Nick. Um, uh, for the button, we actually want a stronger resistor. To, to make our circuit good. And actually one kilo ohm, which is the, the kind of default version that Tinkercad uses, that's about right. Um, sometimes we use uh, 10 kilo ohms, um, uh, but um, the one kilo ohm should be fine for, um, uh, for this. So you can leave that as it is, but that was a really good question. Um, and I'd forgotten to talk about it. So thank you very much. Um, so it's one kilo ohm is the resistance of that, which you can tell by clicking on it and then you can see. So I've got one and then K and then this squiggle, which is an ohm. 
All right, so I think most of you are there ready for the next bit. So we've got two more wires that we need to add to make our, um, to finish making our circuit. So the thing about buttons is in order for a button to work, you need to give it some extra power. Um, it needs it needs that power in order to in order to work. And so that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to uh, zoom in on the Arduino just for a minute. Uh, and if you look closely at your Arduino, you'll be able to see the different labels of each of the different holes. Now, over here, you can see that um, some of these um, holes aren't labeled with numbers like our digital pins that we've used so far. They aren't labeled with GND, the ground or the, the negative bit, but they're labeled with some power. So you can see here there is one that says 5V. That stands for five volts. And that's the one we're going to connect our breadboard to and our button to. So I'm going to go from all the way over here. I'm going to, this red line, this is going to be my power line on my breadboard. So I'm going to draw a wire from that red line to that five volts on my Arduino. So it's going to go all the way down here, all the way over here, and then all the way up here. And then I'm going to make it slightly neater. Oh, I didn't make do a good job of making that neat, did I? Oh well, that'll do. <coughs> but you can see that it's connected to the five volts here. All right. Then we've just got one more wire that we need to add in order to um, get that power to the button. Can anyone have a think about where you might, uh, how you might make a wire that will connect that power here to the button up here? All right, so what we're gonna do, just like when we were connecting other things, we're gonna draw a wire from this red power line on our breadboard up here to our button, but to the other leg of the button. So you can see the power line goes all the way from power in the Arduino, all the way through the wire, all the way along this um, row in the Arduino and the breadboard, through the wire and then to the button. So the button is getting lots of lovely power. And then it's connected to the ground through its other little leg over here. So it connects back to the ground, connects back to the Arduino that way as well, which is marvelous. All right, so give me a thumbs up when you are uh, ready to do the coding because now our circuit is complete. Brilliant, some of you are already there. Um, Fab. Well, I'll give you another minute or two. Um, good job, everybody. Um, um, but if you're there, if you're ready, then we're actually, well, I'm going to show you another, another thing that you can do with your circuits. Now, you can see here my circuit, all of these wires, they're all green, and that's fine. The colour of the wire doesn't matter, because um, it can be any colour you want. It still works as a wire. But by convention, which is just something that everybody um, agrees, you know what, this would be a sensible thing to do, a sensible way of working. We often color code our wires. So we often say that particular wires that do certain things are all one color, wires that do a different thing are all a different color. And that can actually really help when you're trying to debug or fix any problems, because it means you can easily tell which wire is which. So by convention, wires that are um, all about power, getting power to our circuit, they are red. And you can change the color of your circuits, your wires in Tinkercad just by clicking on the wire like this, and then going up here and changing the wire color to a different color here. So I've got two wires that are about power and I'm gonna make those both red here, like that, okay. I've got one wire that is going to what we call ground. So that's going back to the Arduino. It's the end, the end of our circuit. And often we make those brown, I guess, because the earth is brown. Um, ground is brown. Never thought about that before. Um, so I'm going to change that to be brown like that. I'm going to, this is an output. So this wire that goes to our LED um, is an output, it's sending instructions out from the Arduino. So I'm going to leave that green because it's like, go, do this thing. Um, 
And the button is an input. So the button, an input is when we are getting information from our circuit and the Arduino is going, oh, what button are you pushed? Oh, okay, you're pushed, right. So it's getting information in, it's an input, and I'm gonna make that wire yellow, like that. So now looks a bit prettier, which is always nice, because um, I do like things to look pretty, but it also um, will help us if anything is wrong with our circuit. All right, so you all ready for some coding? Give me a hands up or something if you are ready for the coding. Brilliant. Good job. All right, so let's go to our code. Actually, I'm just gonna move my Arduino a little bit that way so we can still see it. Oh, so here is our code. Now, the code that we've got is just a forever loop that says, turn on, stop, turn off, wait, turn on, stop, wait, turn off, wait. So what we need to do is we want the Arduino to ask a question. We want to say, um, is the button pushed? And we want to do one thing if the button's pushed and a different thing if the button has not been pushed. So we are gonna use a new block that you find in control called if then else. And it really does what it says on the, on the tin. So I'm just gonna pull that out. And I'm just gonna pop it here for a minute. We're gonna move it down in a second. Um, I'm going to move out those instructions and then I'll move my if loop into my forever loop. OK, and all an if um, an if loop does is it asks a question. And you see in this little. Um, oh, what's the name of that shape? Somebody. Uh, 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 this shape here. Six sides, a hexagon, isn't it? It's a hexagon. It's a hexagon. <laughs> Sorry, I had an entire complete mind blank there. I was like, six sided shape, what, what's that? Um, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Clearly, I'm getting sleepy. Um, so uh, we ask a question that we're going to put in this six sided hexagon shape here and say, and the question we're going to ask is, has the button been pressed? Okay. Um, so let's do that. So if you go to math, this is American, so they say math instead of maths. Um, uh, you can see all kinds of different blocks that are in that shape. And what we want to do is the hexagon one that is the second from the top that compares two different numbers um, or compares two different figures. So we're going to pull that out and we're going to pop it in our um in that hexagon hole so you'll know if you've got the right kind of um the right kind of uh block because if it if you pick the wrong one it won't um it won't fit into the into the hole and it won't make that nice sound what we want to do is to ask is the button pushed now with computers uh, with arduinos and this digital pin if the button's pushed then it will send a signal that is one, which is the same as on to the Arduino. And if it's not pushed, it will be zero. OK, so we want to see if uh, the button is equal to zero. So in this middle bit, you can change that from the little arrow, which is uh, less than to the equal sign here. Just zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit more clearly. And in this bit, so if the button, we want to say, does the button equal one? Does it, is it, is it on? Um, so we've got the equal one, but in this bit, instead of having one, we want to have um, whatever value the button is telling us. All right. So let's look at our input set of blocks over here. And you can see here, you've got all of these different things and it says, read the top one says read digital pin zero and all that does is figure out what pin four what pin zero is saying what the number that's connected to pin four is so if i put this in here and change it to pin four 
because that's what my button is connected to. Then I'm asking the question, I'm getting the Arduino to ask the question, does pin four, that's the button, equal one? So is it pushed? If it is equal to one, what should we do? If it is equal to one, let's make it flash. So I'm gonna make that code in here. So if it does equal one, I'm going to make it flash. Turn on, wait, turn off, wait. And if it's not equal to one, so if it's not pushed, I'm going to say, let's just turn on. OK, so I've gone to output and I've got set pin to high. I've got one more thing to change here, which is which pin. Set pin seven. So that will send that instruction out of pin seven to my LED connected here. So now I've got some code that I can test out, uh, which is marvelous. Is everybody ready to test their code? Like I've always, like I keep saying, and I know I say it a lot, but it's really important to remember. Um, this is all new to lots of you, um, and so you're doing really, really well um, to follow along. If we are going a little bit too quickly, don't worry at all. It's all recorded. Dane will put it up on YouTube um, in the next day or two, and then you can watch along. You can pause. Um, so you do each step, a single point at a time, um, and uh, and, and you. And you've always got the worksheets too. So the um, session three worksheet to work along with if you get a bit muddled up. So yeah, that's all there as well. So loads of chances um, to, to do it. All right, so everyone's ready. Is there anything that we should go for? Oh, lots of people are ready, fantastic. All right, so let's all start our simulation together. So when I start my simulation, the button is not going to be pushed because I haven't pushed it yet. Um, so what I expect it to do is just to turn my light on. All right. So we'll see if that bit works first. So let's all start our simulations in three, two, one, start. Yay. So my light went on. That's really, really good news. So that means what's happening, hopefully, is the Arduino is asking the question, is the button pushed? And the Arduino says, no, it's not pushed. And so it says, okay, well, I'll just turn this light on. Now, if the next bit, were, if the code is all right, if I press this button, my light will start to flash, okay? Now, in Tinkercad, to simulate, to pretend push the button, all you need to do is hover your mouse over it and then click your mouse which I've just done, and you can see my light has started flashing. Oh, isn't it satisfying when it works? Um, Yay! It me yeah. happy. <laughs> Brilliant, everybody's working. Oh, I think, yes. Good job, everybody. Great work. So yes, so you do need, so I'm just having a quick look in the chat. Um, if you, uh, um, to change the pin that you are reading, you just need to click on the little arrow with all of the different numbers, make sure it's whichever, uh, whichever um, number pin your button is connected to. Um, if you don't see them, remember that there are a couple of different types of, um, uh, of things that you could uh, have got. So make sure it says read digital pin zero. All right. Because um, there are lots of other things that we will look at later on. Um, but, uh, but we just want to look at the digital pin for now. So if I click it, it starts to flash which is fantastic. All right, so um, I'm very impressed uh, that you can, um, uh, that you have all done this. This is marvelous. Uh, if you want it, you can change your code so it does other things. So I've decided here that if my button is pressed, I want a light to flash. Um, and if my button is not pressed, I just want my light to be on. But you could change it. So if your button is pressed, pressed, 
I'm finding it difficult to say the word pressed. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, if the button is pressed, then it flashes really fast. Or um, if the button is not pressed, it could turn off, for instance. So it's entirely up to you what instructions you want to give, depending on whether the button is pressed or not. Um, well, you've all done really, really, um, really well. Uh, so why don't I think that you have done so well that we can make our circuits in real life? Do you all be up for that? Yeah, fantastic. Dane's like, yes, yes, I would. Brilliant. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll leave it up for a uh, minute, just so if you haven't quite got there, um, then you can still look. You just need to make sure that your circuit looks like this and your code looks like this. Um, and But while we're waiting, if you've done that, then you can get your Arduino out. Um, remember our safety things. We don't uh, turn the, we don't change our components if the Arduino is plugged in. Um, and we need to keep a good eye on all of the little, little bits and components, especially if you've got like baby brothers and sisters around or pets, who might accidentally nibble, um, nibble bits that they don't want to nibble. Um, and also you really don't want to stand on an LED um, because it would, it would be unpleasant. Um, Fantastic. Um, great job, everyone. And like I said, don't worry if you're not quite there yet. Um, if it's not quite working, um, then you can uh, always watch the video. Another thing that helps uh, Sarah and Dane to help you is if you, if it's not quite working, if you say what your Tinkercad nickname is, then they can quickly have a look at your circuit and your code. Um, and that means that they will uh, be able to have a look at what you're doing and be able to give you some um, tips about what might uh, help you, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop my share now for a minute. Um, and then I'm going to turn on Arduino Cam. So here I've got my um, I've got my kit out here, and I've got my Arduino cam, which I have stuck in uh, on a stack of DVDs so that it's about the right size. If you don't have your real kit yet, don't worry um, at all because what you can do is you can carry on with your um, uh, with your buttons and your new circuit. What I would do if I were you is I would add another button and another LED and see if you can control them with the different buttons. One of my uh, one of the fun things to do is to see if you can make uh, Morse code, you can flash Morse code messages with your buttons and your LEDs. I always quite enjoy doing that. All right, so I've got my, um, I've got my uh, breadboard and my circuit and I'm just gonna pop an LED in like this. You can see my LED is all connected. Does that look right? I've switched to a blue LED because you couldn't really see the yellow LED. Um, it was not bright enough. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to connect my LED to pin seven on my Arduino. Oh, I'm. Uh, there we go. Sorry that my hand's in the way for a second. My it doesn't want to go into the little hole can be quite fiddly so don't worry if it takes you a while it normally takes me a while as well to guess everything then I'm going to get my small resistor so you remember that we said last time that the strength of the resistor is written on the um, on the little strips that they're connected to and Danes were really clear and mine are really faded um, so just to remind you there we go that's yeah. how it's written. That's a 220. And so we're looking yeah. for the 220 so I get... or maybe 100, 100 ohms as well was fine, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, that's fine. 220 or 100 or 330, there will be okay. So I'm going to put that from my resist from my LED to my ground line. That's the blue line over here. 
There we go. And then finally, see if I can get a nice long wire. I'm gonna see if I can get a longer wire than these. I'm going to connect my, uh, that blue line all the way over here. Now, you might remember me saying last time that my Arduino is actually a little bit broken um, and a, a pin has broken off uh, in, in one of my grounds, but that's okay, I can just do it. Okay, so now I've got the button, no, button circuit to do. Now, this is what the button looks like in real life. It's kind of cute. It's got a round push button at the top. And if you look at it from the other side, it's got four little legs. Oh, sorry. It's got four little legs, um, just like on the um, on the kit. Yeah, I think buttons are really cute. I know it's a bit silly to say an electrical component is cute, but I think they are. Um, all right, and now just like on the circuit diagram that we um, did in Tinkercad, I'm going to pop my button over the little dip. See, so you've got this ridge, this canal in the middle of the breadboard here, and I'm going to put it over the little dip like that. So you see, two of my legs are over here, two of them are on the other side. Does that work? Oh, I'm just going to see if I can twist the wire a little bit so you can see a bit better. All right. So we all ready to do the next bit. So we've got our LED circuit, which you all made last week as well. Um, and we've put a button in as well. Fantastic. Oh, and somehow, sorry, if you stop the whiteboard, that would be great. All right, now I'm going to get a wire to connect my button to the Arduino that's gonna send the instructions to the Arduino. So I'm just gonna copy what we did on Tinkercad and it's also in your um, in your uh, worksheet. So I've got a wire that goes from the leg uh, here on this side, which is the right-hand side um, of the button. And I'm going to go to pin four. Did I go to pin four? Yeah, I went to pin four on my Arduino. That goes like that, you can see. Now, a mistake I often make when I'm making real circuits is I don't pay enough attention to which pin I'm putting it into in my Arduino because they're really close together and it's really easy to be like, I shall put it in pin four and you actually put it in pin three. So do be careful about that. Um, they are really close together, aren't they? They are really close <laughs> together. Um, it's the thing I tend to get wrong the most, um, I have to say. All right. And now we're going to do that resistor um, for, the, uh, for the button. Um, and remember, this is a stronger resistor. So if you use a one kilo ohm, it just says 1K on your, on your little strip. Um, we're going to do that to go from the same row, sorry, same column as the wire to the button. And then it's going to go to the blue line on the Arduino. Like that. So only two more wires left to go. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can poke the wires out a little bit so that you can see it a little, be a little bit better. I know it can be a bit tricky to see because it's so small and fiddly, but there is a photograph on the worksheet so you can really look in, um, uh, look in, in detail. And the important thing is you just have to do, have exactly the same wires and resistors and LEDs and buttons in the same places as on your Tinkercad circuit. So everything that's on your Tinkercad circuit should be in your resist and in your real circuit. All right, we've got one last, two last wires to go, sorry. Um, and that's the power. 
Um, see, I just made the mistake that lots of people make. We always, people often forget one of these wires. So um, I want one more wire to go from the other leg of the Arduino, uh, of the Arduino, of the button up here to the red line on my breadboard. Goes like that. All right. And then one final wire. Um, one final wire, which will go from the red line on my breadboard to the power, the 5V on my Arduino. I'm going to go all the way over here. And again, I'm going to be really careful to try and make sure it's the right one. 5V over there. So now our circuit is complete. Fantastic. Good job, everyone. So we did go through that pretty quickly. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes to, um, to, to catch up. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. If there's anything that you'd like me to do again or to show you again, um, put this in the chat. Um, or Sarah Dane, if lots of people are saying um, uh, the same ask and the same question, do, um, do let me know. Oh, I can see some pictures of some people's LEDs and our, uh, Arduino boards. That's awesome. Nice. Um, really good. So, um, like I said, this is being recorded, so don't worry. Um, you can always catch up, or you can just copy along from the uh, from the uh, worksheet. All right, because the next steps we're going to the next steps we are going to uh, send our code from Tinkercad to the real Arduino. So I've seen this question about the white wire. Now my white wire is going from ground, from my blue line, the minus line on my breadboard. And so it's going to one of the GND pins on my Arduino. So yours will probably be, and it's neater to be over here like this. But unfortunately, um, my Arduino uh, board is quite old and it's a little bit broken and that pin isn't working. So I need to know. Uh, so I'm going to put it to another GND pin, which is over here. There we go. I think. There. All right. Good job. Okay, so do we think we are ready to send our code from Tinkercad to uh, the real, real um, circuit. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. If you'd like to try. Fantastic. We've got right. some. Oh, look at all these thumbs up. <laughs> you're all doing so, so well. I'm so proud of you. Really good. It's marvelous. Fantastic. So yeah, so I'll give people just another few seconds before we go on to Duino. Like I said, if you're not quite ready, don't worry, um, because this is all recorded. But um, oh, thank you, Leo. Leo has put the um, link to the Duino app into uh, the chat for you. So you can click on that link. Um, but actually, I'm not sure if that's going to work. So let's do, I think we need a, a little bit extra on the, so it wasn't quite the right, um, quite the right link. So I've just popped the link to the Duino app in the, uh, in the chat. All right, so I'm going to start to share my screen now. Um, There we go. Oh. So here is the circuit that we built on Tinkercad and that we have now, some of us have built in real life with our real Arduino. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to send it 
we're going to take this code, we're going to translate it into a different language that the Arduino can understand, which is just the same as like translating um, from English into French or something like that. Uh, and then we're going to send it to the Arduino. Now, this is the bit that does sometimes get a bit um, tricky because computers are really annoying um, and they often just are like, oh, I can't be bothered to do that today. I'm going to glitch. Um, but you just have to be really patient um, with it. So I'm going to stop my simulation to start with. The first step in Tinkercad is up here, we've got our blocks. And now this changes the way, changes the languages that we see. So you click on that, and instead of doing blocks, you do blocks plus text. All right, and then it gives you the translation of our lovely blocks that we all did together into a different language called C or C++. Um, and now it's not that different. And actually, if you read it through, you can see that actually quite a lot is pretty similar. So we've got the if here, which is just the same as this if. And it does says if do if pin four, that's what it calls digital read, is equal to one, then do the flashing bit, one else just turn on. So it's very, very similar. Um, and you, you can read it through. It's just a bit easier and quicker for us to do the blocks. So I'm going to highlight all of that and remember to highlight absolutely everything. Um, if you if you miss out even one tiny little thing, the computer will just go, oh no, I don't understand. I don't understand. Help me. I'm not going to do any anything. And we're going to copy that. So I've highlighted it and then you just do control C to copy. Once you've done that, head over to the Duino app and we pop the link to that in the chat. And then you can go to code, which is here at the top right hand side. <laughs> now, if you've opened Duino before, sometimes you already come up with a, a project. But what we're going to do here is create a new project and I'm going to call it Glow Your Own Button. like that. There we go. Now, you might remember the first time we opened Tinkercad, it gave us some, oh, would you like to do this code? We don't want to do that code. So Duino does the same. So I'm going to highlight all of that, which I did by control A and then delete it because we've written our own code that is much, much better. So I'm going to paste our code into there by doing control and V. And then that's our code there. All right, now I'm going to plug in my Arduino to my computer. I'm just gonna try and have to move it slightly because my computer is a little bit further away. So you've got the, um, the USB cable, okay? And I plug it into the silver thing on my Arduino. Then you could see it made a flash and that's what it did last time. Oh, it's really bright. I'm not sure if you can all see my uh, my Arduino still, but it's flashing really brightly because the code that we did last time um, is still on my Arduino. Uh, and so what I told it to do was to flash away um, like that. All right, now back to the Arduino app. What we need to do is go to select device and tell the computer what we are sending to our Arduino, uh, what, what we are sending to. So you click on select device and then you get some options. Now, these options change depending on your computer. Um, I'm really sorry, it gets very confusing. Sometimes it says Arduino. So if it says Arduino, click on that. Um, mine says USB serial device. Um, so I'm going to click on that. That's what my Arduino is called. Uh, at the moment, click on that and then click connect. Then you can see down here at the bottom, instead of it says serial selected, so it knows what it's sending to. And then the last step, um, we hope until, and then we get an error and then we go, oh no, what do we need to do? What, did, what do we need to do to fix it? We compile and upload. So compile is just the computer thinking about it, turning it into ones and zeros for the Arduino to understand. And upload is send send out to the Arduino. So I'm going to click this button 
Um, we don't have very long left of this, um, of this session before we move into the troubleshooting portion. So I'm gonna click this one straight away. If you're not quite there yet, again, don't worry. We've got the troubleshooting session that's um, after this and we will uh, upload the video so you can record and pause so that you can do everything at whatever speed you like. So you all need to cross your fingers because this is a bit that often goes wrong for no reason that we can uh, explain easily. Um, I'm going to compile and upload so you can see it's compiling, it's thinking about it, it's sending it and it's done. Hey. Now, can you see, can you still see my Arduino, the Arduino cam, Dame? Uh, we can, yeah. yeah. So it's now a static light. So it's now static light, that's because the button isn't pressed. So part of the code is definitely working. It knows that the button's not been pressed and so it's just turned on. Now the moment of truth is if I press the button, will it start to flash? Oof, cross your fingers. Yay! Yes, excellent, great. Sorry, it's really, really bright, isn't it? It's super bright, isn't it? Super bright. Yeah. There we go. Fantastic. Brilliant job, everybody. Do any of you have your um your does does any of you have your code sent? Is your button working in your real Arduino? Let us know in the chat. But if it's not, like I said, don't worry, we've got debugging time um uh, after. Uh, after this. Absolutely. Which is marvellous. So just before we stop the um, the recording and we move to troubleshooting, I thought it might be helpful if we go through a few quick things that often go wrong. Um, so, uh, so the first things to check. One of the things to check, and I get this wrong all the time, even though I have been doing this for many, many years um, because I'm really, really old, uh, is my LEDs are very special bits of equipment because they only let electricity go through them in one way. OK, so if you put the LED in um, the correct way, then the electricity will pass through it. And it'll be like, hooray, and it will turn on or it will flash or something. If it's the other way, the electricity can't pass through it. Um, and so uh, the LED won't turn on at all. So one of the first things that I always check um, to do, because I basically just guess, and if I get if it doesn't turn on, I just try it the other way, um, is unplug your um, Arduino and then take your LED out, turn it around and put it back in exactly the same space, but just the other way around and then see if that works. Cause that's often what the, um, uh, what the problem is. You can tell which way around the LED is supposed to go because one of the little legs is longer than the other. Um, and there's a little flat bit at the side of your, of the LED as well. Um, but I just normally just check, uh, just try it out, just test it out, see if it works. And if it doesn't try the other way. Um, like we said before, another thing that is really easy to do is just to put um, put the wires in one space the wrong way uh, or something because that's they're really small and it's really easy to put it in the wrong um, the wrong pin on the Arduino or the wrong hole on the breadboard. So double check that all of your wires are where they should be, and it's always really helpful to trace your complete circuit. So if I shift back to Tinkercad, it's always a really good idea to go, right, so where does my, where does the electricity want to go? It goes up here, it goes through pin seven, through the wire, through here, along the LED, through the breadboard, through the resistor, along the breadboard and back to the wire. So make sure there is a complete path or a complete circuit, um, because if it doesn't, then the circuit won't work at all. Another couple of things to check um, on the Duino app, which I've switched back to now, you can see over here on the right hand, low left, left hand side. Correct. <laughs> on the left. On this side. On the left. Um, that um, we, there's just one file name, gyobutton.ino. And that's the file name of this bit of code. Sometimes, for reasons that I admit we don't really understand, 
another another file turns up here, um, often a .c file. Um, and if there, if it's got more than one, then sometimes Drino gets confused and it sends the wrong thing. So you just need to delete the one that is not gyo.ino. So you can do that um, if you uh, uh, by by clicking on it often. I'm not sure it would it will delete it if I don't have to. Um, but if you click on it and then you can you should be able to delete it if there's more than one. That's a good thing to try. And then about so can you just quickly create another one and just delete it just so people can see just okay. using the little I can try. Just in there. Add file. Okay, so you see now I've got a new one here. Um and if I right click has that pop up come up yeah i can see that and you can so see the delete it, then you can see the little bin so you can just delete that there delete the file confirm yes um and the final two final bits of advice one is make sure it's working on tinkercad if it's not working on tinkercad it definitely won't work in the real circuit so um, you need to make sure it's working in Tinkercad before we send it to the physical circuit. Um, and then two, the oldest bit of computer um, advice for any computer problems that you ever see in any of them, close it and start again. Sometimes it just gets a bit confused, especially actually if you've unplugged and plugged your Arduino in a few times. So sometimes just closing the tab on your browser, opening it again and doing exactly the same thing will work. Sometimes closing the whole browser and then reopening it again also works. Okay. And that was a very quick whistle stop tour of here are some common things that go wrong for me and they might go wrong for you as well. Um, but uh, I'm really impressed with how quickly you've all um, you've all done things. Really, really good job and well done for keeping up and for um, uh, persevering, that's always the most important thing with computer coding. So carry on until it until it works. All right, I'll hand back to Dane. Is there anything else that we need to uh, go over, Dane? Great, yeah. Well, uh, you might remember that mine didn't compile last week, um, but yeah. I've had a test. And so I've got a, I'm going to put my code in the chat. That's my Tinkercad drawing uh, and my code and this is what I've got um so I've got a it's off and if I press it if I press the button it should do something fun Yay. so I've set I set a little sequence up so you can play with doing different flashes you can put as many LEDs in as you can fit you can make that rainbow that we talked about last time uh, if you like there's another thing that's quite fun is that I'm going to unplug my Arduino and you might remember from the very first session, I showed the egg box. Um, and so now I've just got my uh, Arduino and my breadboard and my USB spare. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it in to just a regular adapter that happens to have some USB slots in it. But you can also use a little USB adapter, or you can use a little phone kind of. Um, portable battery thing. Um, but I always think it's quite cool to think that when you plug it in and turn on your power supply, um, the Arduino is now just powered and it's not connected to a computer. And it just is a good way of showing that this is just a, now an independent portable lantern that you can use if you've got a mobile battery or if you want to plug it into your um, socket in your bedroom or somewhere in the house. You can have your little Arduino flashing and it doesn't need to be connected to your computer for it to work. So I think that's just really cool. So that's the start of your mobile kinetic um, sensitive lantern that you're making as part of Grow Your Own. So please do watch the recording um, and pause it, rewind it, uh, fast forward it and uh, use the companion worksheet I hope you have lots of luck and we're going to see you all as well next week. Um, so from Blow Your Own Session 3 2024, 
it's a big goodbye for me. Sarah's left, and uh, and we hope to see you again next time. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Well done.